Hey there, and many thanks for tuning in to Y254 TV. It's at 12, the day of the month of January 2022. I trust that you have been well. Thank you for choosing to be part of us tonight. You're watching the news beat. A very good Wednesday evening to you. My name is Dereva Hillary. Let's get you updated, shall we? Welcome. Recovery mission is underway to rescue a 38-year-old fisherman who drowned in Lake Victoria on Tuesday near Sukru Island Beach in Suba, North Sub County. The man, identified as Nicholas Ochin, was on a fishing expedition alongside his counterpart Zado Komwok, who swam to safety when their boat capsized. Addressing the media, Homabi County Beach Management Unit BMU chairperson Edward Oremo explained that the incident was caused by bad weather conditions characterized by heavy winds and rainfall witnessed in the area. He further stated that Mock managed to escape possibly because he had a life-saving jacket on him before the boat capsized. Oremo asked the fishermen in the region to adhere to the regulations put in place to ensure their safety while in the lake, adding that it is important to avoid the waters during bad weather conditions. New Eastern Regional Commissioner Evans Achoki has handed over Narok County Commissioner Office to the new Commissioner Isaac Wanyonyi Masinde. Achoki thanked Narok residents, especially the youth and elders, for working together with the security team in fostering peace and tranquility in the region. He called on his predecessors to ensure there is peace during this electioneering period. The new, the new Narok County Commissioner Isaac Wanyonyi Masinde, after taking over the office, promised residents of Narok a peace during and after the elections and asked those vying for political seats to embrace tolerance and adhere to the rule of law. Masinde warned aspirants against hate speech, else they will be arrested and arraigned in courts. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank the Narok County security team the all the Ngao staff from Narok County, starting with the DCCs, SECs, assistant chiefs, uh, and the village elders. I also want to take this opportunity to thank the political leaders of Narok County, all elected leaders in Narok County. I have worked very closely with all the leaders to ensure that this county remains peaceful and indeed for the last one year Narrow County has experienced uh, relative peace that uh, was elusive for quite some time. So I want to thank uh, all the leaders for the cooperation that I received and uh, all the security of officers for the job well done. Going forward uh, I also want to thank all the residents of Narok County for the cooperation that I received from them. I also want to thank the media in Narok. Narok is one of those counties with a very vibrant media. And I was able to convey my messages to the media. And every time I wanted to convey any message, especially the FM radios, which are very popular amongst this community, I was able to get to the studio and to communicate to my messages in, uh, of peace and uh, all. I want to take this opportunity also to welcome the leadership, the political leadership of Naroko County. Uh, I want to welcome them so that we can be able to work together. I want to assure them that we will make sure that we work together to ensure that there is peace under security because majorly the work of uh, the, county, the county commissioner under the county security is to ensure that we protect life and property. That one I want to assure you. I want to take this opportunity also to ensure, to tell you that um, uh, 
uh, we will make sure that uh, this year being an And now to security matters, a man is receiving treatment at the Marara Referral Hospital in Samburu County after cattle raiders shot him before driving away 28 of his cows. The hospital medical personnel in charge, Dr. Robert Nato, said the victim is in stable condition, adding the bullet, adding that the bullet had penetrated through the ear and the victim will be subjected to counseling to enable him to recover from the trauma. And in Baringo County, leaders continue to urge the government to address the humanitarian crisis that has, pe has hit parts of the county following banditry attacks that have left many people displaced. Following attacks in Kisumet, Kagir, Yata and Chepkesin in Baringo North, over 300 families have fled their homes fearing for their lives with others in La Maya, Baringo South camping at Kepkechir uh, after being displaced. Staying on security issues, a special forensic team has been dispatched to Rivayala and Yala Subcounty Level 4 Hospital to assist with investigations in a bid to identify the 19 bodies retrieved from the river. In a statement, police spokesperson Bruno Shioso said the bodies had been dumped in the river over a stated period of time, contrary to media reports insinuating that all the bodies were dumped at once. Shioso said despite an appeal from the police, no one has come forward to claim the bodies that are are lying at Yala Subcounty Level 4 Hospital. He appealed to anyone with information to come forward to aid in the investigations. Local residents claim the bodies are dumped into the river at night by unidentified people. Gem Subcounty Police Commander Charles Chacha said they had begun the investigations after Yala residents raised concern over the bodies. This comes even in the wake of uh, increased cases of discovery of bodies across the country in, and in killings that have remained puzzling and unresolved. in Mombasa County is fighting through National Land Commission to repossess its land which was grabbed by unscrupulous land grabbers 20 years ago. At the Kenya School of Government, the National Land Commission, NLC, Alternative Dispute Resolution Technical Team continued to receive submissions over the disputed Nyali Primary School land round. NLC constituted an Alternative Dispute Resolution Technical Team which processed various claims from the national government, county, public institution and members of the public. The parcel of the land measuring 14.7 acres, which reportedly belongs to Nyali Primary School, had been set aside to build a secondary school. Simply to make sure that this matter is not determined, but I'm hell bent on ensuring uh, that we have this matter sorted out. Uh, I think uh, there was a metamorphosis of the parcels because uh, other subdivisions were done, other numbers were issued. So it was a scheme to basically make sure that whatever work the commission is doing does not succeed and that the title documentation uh, cannot be traced to a particular number. I think what they forgot is that uh, the land is very much next to Nyali Primary. The land uh, cannot, the land speaks for itself. It's next to the primary school. The documentation are there showing that it was for the building of a secondary school. So it, 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 it's very clear that uh, anything can be done to obtain a document or over the land. But at the end of the day, the buck goes back that this is actually land that ought to be uh, given back to the school. This Idris Hussein Mohammed sold this property to Justice Said Jitembwe in 2004. Now, from 2004, Justice Chitembwe has been in occupation of this property 
now we are talking about over 18 years, has been using this property exclusively for over those 18 years and has massively developed this property. When he was buying this property in 2002, the relevant office, offices, that is the land registry, confirmed that this property is actually, was actually owned by Idris Hussein Mohammed. And knowing that uh, our system borrows heavily from the torrent system of registration, which provides uh, three clear principles, the mirror principle, the curtain principle, and the compensation, our client was safe. It is our contention, therefore, that the question of the dispute, the, the only institution that now deals with the question of dispute over land, between now my client and Nyali Primary, that will be the Environment and Land Court. And we are asking that if they have, because you see, when we come here, there was the question of... Uh, Thank you for staying with us. You're watching News on Y254 TV. Now, at least 27,800 Brighton needy students from various day secondary schools across Embu County have received bursaries worth 64 million shillings from the devolved unit. This comes as a relief for the parents of needy learners who have suffered depressed incomes owing to the impact of COVID-19 on their small businesses. The beneficiaries who are drawn from 260 Schools received amounts ranging between 2,000 to 10,000 shillings depending on the level of need. And this is according to County Executive Committee CEC Member of Education John Kiamati is speaking while issuing checks to, to school principals at Embu Talent Academy. Kiamati said the, the amount disbursed was, was faced on one of the county education support fund noting plans were underway to ensure phase two and three funds set to benefit needy learners in boarding secondary school tertiary institution and universities were processed and dispersed on time. The CEC appealed to fund managers to ensure the process of recruitment was above board so that no deserving case was left out. The CEC also called on policymakers to initiate another bursary scheme that will ensure some of the brightest needy students are offered full scholarships. To the members of the public, I think it's important to know bursary is not for every student. That's why our members are now crying. Because every applicant wants work to be given. I believe the logistics of the bursary is to assist the needy and very bright. But now that, that issue has been overtaken. Everyone wants work, bursary. I don't know what to do. But battery is not for everybody. And therefore, those who miss out the battery should not go fight with MCA or with the department. We cannot afford to give everybody battery. The Malinde High Court has issued a temporary order restraining the county government of Kilifi from taking over revenue collections point manned by private company Raindrops Limited. Malinde Residence Judge Stephen Kidinji restrained the county government from taking over the collection points and or collect collecting cess and parking revenue from the company pending the inter-parties hearing and determination of a suit filed by Raindrops Limited. The suit, which was also, was also certified as urgent, follows a decision by the county administration to terminate the services of the company that has been collecting excess of parking fees on its behalf since 2013. On January 15, 2022, the county department of finance 
issued a notice warning traders against paying money to, to raindrops and instead direct them to pay their dues to respective county revenue offices and county revenue offices. The company's account, accountant, Mr. Elijah Mbigo, said the company had signed a 15-year contract with the county administration to collect a revenue from two streams and that terminating the service seven years earlier is a clear breach of contract. Na koti, ni sisi ya mbibu na stahili kuchukosho. Na hata koti mesema, paka sasa tumekua orders ya sisi kuchukosho. Teknoloji yetu, inatuzesha kuchukosho mwingi kuliko wao. Ukitaka kujua kweli ni, ni, ni vipi tunakuchukua ushuru, angalia ni system yetu na wao. Jana wao ni chukua ushuru. Nenda kwa ukangalia pesa lapo mchukua. Sisi tunachukua ushuru, kwa mwezi tunatengeneza kama 37 million. Wao kutoka Kenya ipate uhuru, hawajafika 3 million shillings kwa hizo stream bill. Nikikonesha hapa, toka tuingie paka leo. Kwa county, ya, county government ya kilifi, tumetengeneza 1.9 billion. Ingekuwa ni wao na ile 3 million yao wangekuwa wajafika ata 300 million. Sisi tumekolekto 1.9 billion. Idara ya usalama iangalie kote kote. Oseambiwe tu, kasabu county government walienda wakaambia idara ya usalama hawa kupeana court order. Wakaingia na bunduki kwenye vituo vietu. Ambapo wao watu wetu mbao wakopale ni vijana wadogo. Polisi anakuja na AK-47. Sisi ni kumishua. Hakuna court order, hakuna chochote ambacho walipewa na, na court kwa mbao yeah. mm. Kwa hivyo labda mna wasi wasi na, pia. Na omba tu serekali <coughs> kuu iingile haya. from Kenya, Ghana has denied reports that it would consider hosting a processing center for asylum seekers on behalf of the UK. Several British news, out, news outlets had reported that UK was drawing up plans to send thousands of asylum seekers to countries such as Ghana and Rwanda for processing and resettlement in a pact dubbed Operation Dead Meat. In a statement, Ghana's foreign ministry said it had not engaged with the UK on the matter and did not intend to consider any such operation in the future. The African Union last year opposed the exportation of asylum seekers from Europe to Africa, terming the move xenophobic and completely unacceptable. Miles away might meet the letter of our obligation to asylum. You are now up to date with the news, but many thanks for keeping us a company. Let's do this again next week, Wednesday. Until then, enjoy the rest of our programming. My name is Dereva Hillary. Goodbye and good night. Um, but